Hello, it's me, AMC me, and I'm back with another reading video of Marry My Husband. The last video I posted was for chapter four, and I'm going to start adding, doing the chapters together. I think maybe like two or three chapters at a time because I actually look to see how many chapters there are and oh my freaking goodness there are quite a lot <laughs> so since I decided to post videos only once a month I need to speed this up <laughs> well I don't really need to speed it up but I feel like it would not drag out or I might get bored. So <laughs> I thought it'd be more advantageous to myself if I did multiple chapters in one video. I hope you've been well. Um, I've been doing pretty decent, pretty decent. Um, always going through stuff. But, you know, it's not been too bad. I, I hope you've been well. So, I'm going to start on Chapter 5, which is The Repeating Past. Quick rundown of Chapter 4. We found out that... Um, Her bestie um, and her boyfriend were somewhat slightly flirting with each other. More so Suman was trying to flirt with him. Um, he actually is still nice to her at this point. I don't think he started acting like a dick until after they were married. Um, from what I can remember from the webtoon and the TV show. That mask slipped really quick. So, there is that. Um, there are hints that her boss is concerned about her. We don't know if he's traveled back from the past yet. Uh... Spoiler, oops, my bad, sorry. If you have not read the webtoon or watched the TV show, my apologies, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But here we go. There wasn't much in the apartment she lived in before getting married. Jiwon liked things to be tidy, so she only brought in the bare necessities. When Suman had visited her uh, for the first time, she'd said that it seemed like nobody lived there. Afterwards, she gave Jiwon a few small knickknacks and dolls. That used to be us, Jiwon muttered, holding two stuffed animals, little baby chicks in her hands. The two had never fought once over their long friendship. When they ate together, Suman always responded with, whatever you like, and let Jiwon choose. She went so far as to start showing Suman the menu before choosing a place to eat, just to make sure they had something she liked. Sure, I like whatever you like. Of course she does. <laughs> Those were Suman's own words. Who would have known that also applied to guys I like too. Jiwon blamed herself for not noticing sooner. In retrospect, it was strange. Jiwon's crushes never resulted in anything. Maybe that wasn't weird on its own, but it was too strange to be a coincidence that all her crushes ended up confessing to Suman instead. That is a pattern. That is very strange. Very, very strange. She'd only been in two relationships her entire life, and they both started when Suman was absent. Of course. Get that barrier out of the way. First was with her senior from college, and the second time was with Minhwan. As the cherry on top, the guy from college had broken things off with her coincidentally after they went to Busan together and he met Suman. Hmm. 
Jiwon searched the cupboard for a 50 liter garbage bag. She stuffed it full of dolls, gifts, and other objects Suman had given her. She also taught men, tossed Minwon and Suman's toothbrushes, pajamas, and other belongings inside too. Her apartment suddenly felt much bigger with all the clutter gone. After she took a quick shower and dried her hair, she noticed a, a new message on her phone. Minwon. I'm done for the day. I'll pick you up in front of your apartment. The time showed it was sent 30 minutes ago. It took about an hour to get to her apartment from work, which meant she had 30 minutes left. She lazily typed a reply and was about to turn on her wand-shaped flat iron when a memory flashed in her head. On an evening in spring, much like today, she sat in front of her vanity and plugged in her flat iron. Her phone buzzed with the message and fell to the ground. As she bent down to pick it up, her arm touched the flat iron's cord and it fell on the back of her hand. Despite her best efforts to treat the injury immediately, she was left with a large notable, notice, noticeable scar. Bzz. Jiwon stared blankly at the mirror and was brought back to reality by the vibrating phone. It buzzed again. The phone that was now hanging precariously over the edge of the vanity. Looking back at the flat iron, she saw it was located in the perfect location to fall if she bent down to pick up her phone. I can change my fate. Jiwon bent down to pick up her phone, careful not to touch the flat iron this time. The back of her hand remained fine. With a smile, she flipped the phone open and read the text. Minwon, I'm on my way. Get ready. Oh, right. I'm bringing a present with me. Present? Jiwon traced her memory and realized what the present was. Surprise! I got you, didn't I? I'm buying the drinks today. That was probably what Suman was shout as she came jumping into Jiwon's arms. She felt like she'd been forced to chew up a cockroach. On the verge of telling Minwan to toss Suman out on the side of the road, she paused. At the age of 27, Jiwon chalked up her bad luck with boys as a coincidence. Of course, Suman had so many guys falling head over heels for her since she was prettier and cuter. However, now she was 37 years oh, now she has 37 years of experience under her belt. In the face of such knowledge, coincidence turns to conspiracy. There was a clear reason all those guys went for Suman, but she couldn't remember how Suman did it. Back then, she'd been so infatuated with her only friend that nothing she did ever stuck, as, stuck out as odd. Today's the day. I'm going to see how you always acted and how stupid I was. Jiwon grabbed the flat iron and absentmindedly pulled it through her hair after she rubbed on some sunscreen, then sighed when she opened her closet. Minwon said he married her because of how frugal she was and her closet showed it. She didn't understand why her pathetic self had lived so sparsely in her 20s, a time that would have never been given back to her again. It was too late to go shopping and she didn't have any extra money anyway. Jiwon wore a t-shirt and leggings, both of which were the best her wardrobe had to offer. Then she went to the entrance, stuffed her feet into a pair of old sneakers, and made sure to throw away the bag of trash on her way out. After some waiting, a mid-sized white car drove down the street and stopped right in front of Jiwon. The door to the passenger seat opened and Suman popped out with her arms spread wide open. Surprise! I got you, didn't I? I'm buying the drinks today, Suman chirped. Okay, thanks. Jiwon subtly twisted to the side to avoid Suman's embrace. She hadn't been moving that fast, but Suman waved her arms in the air and stumbled. Ah, Miss Jong! Minwan, who had been walking beside her, quickly grabbed her arms. Jiwon smirked at the sight, then quickly lowered the corners of her mouth again. Thank you, Mr. Park. Jiwon, are you feeling better? Suman beamed and padded over to link her arms to Jiwon's. Jiwon felt so uncomfortable she thought she would vomit, but she left her alone. A part of her also wanted to see how fake Suman could be. I wasn't sick in the first place, she said. Anyway, we're going to the street bar out front. Are you okay with that? Yeah, of course. 
Minwan left his car in the apartment's parking lot. After some walking, they arrived at the street bar Jiwon frequented with Minwan. As the three sat around a blue table, a kind-looking lady gave them a jar of water and glasses for soju. Do you want some chicken feet, Minwan? Minwan nodded as Jiwon questioned and turned to Suman. Chicken feet, he said. I'm okay with that, but can you eat things like this, Miss Jong? I like everything our Jiwon likes. Suman tucked her hair behind her ears. The earrings dangling were familiar. Suman had given Jiwon a matching pair, saying they were friendship earrings. Jiwon had worn them frequently, never realizing how absurd they looked on her. Jiwon smiled bitterly and ordered for them. Boneless chicken feet, fish cake soup, and a bottle of soju, please. Ah, and one soda, too. Cucumber spears, dipping sauce, and ice-cold soju came out first. Minwan looked at Jiwon like he was seeing her for the first time as she opened the soju. You seem pretty today. Really? Jiwon pretended to laugh shyly and filled their glasses with soju. Ha <laughs> ha! Jiwon, why are you so shy? Suman covered her mouth and giggled. Our Jiwon is pretty no matter what she wears. She's tall like a giant too. Oh right, Mr. Park, give me your hand. Minwan seemed a little confused, but held out his hand anyway. Suman wasted no time and put her hand against his. It looked even more petite when compared to a man's large hand. I knew it! Your hand is similar in size to Jiwan's. You're perfect for each other. Thank you, Miss Jong. You know, your personalities are so different that nobody would ever guess how close you two are. Even I was surprised to hear you were both friends. Minwan looked a bit awkward, but he didn't seem to mind the atmosphere. Our Jiwan was lonely. She didn't have any friends either, so we stuck together all the time. But Jiwan grew super tall, and I'm so tiny that I always wear clothes like this. Suman's cream-colored dress was decorated with small flowers. It was a design that would never suit Jiwan. In response to that sad realization, Jiwan emptied her glass of soju and dipped a cucumber spear in the sauce, chewing it vehemently. Yeah, we ate the same food at school and everything. What did you do differently while I was growing this tall? Huh? You're right. I must have gotten, I must not have gotten enough sleep as a kid. Suman uh, became a bit flustered by Jiwan's curt response, then lifted her glass. Cheers! In celebration of us having our first drinks together. Jiwan raised her empty glass carelessly and clinked it. Returning to the past, Jiwan an objective uh, returning to the past gave Jiwan an objective perspective. Now that she saw it, it was ridiculous how obvious it was. Suman, who kept trying to express how cute she was, and Minwan, who kept taking serpent, serpent, oh my gosh, ser, serpentous glances at her. Here are your chicken feet. The bar owner put down a white plate filled with chicken feet in the middle of their table. Suman poked their red and plump chicken feet with their chopsticks and made a strange noise. Eek! So creepy. Minwan looked at her. You said you liked chicken feet, though. Suman responded bravely to Minwan's question. I like everything our Jiwan likes. Jiwan picked up a chicken foot and put it into her mouth. How long had it been since she had something spicy? As the burning spice and chewy texture harmoniously combined in her mouth, she started to feel a little better. Is it good, Jiwan? You're so good at eating this kind of stuff. Suman blinked as if fascinated. Why are you asking? Remember the last time we had chicken feet together? We had three bottles of soju then, too. Did we? Suman's tone showed how flustered she was. It was clear she didn't remember. Jiwan stopped the conversation there and moved the plate of chicken feet aside to make space. Please put the fish cake soup here. The server was setting down the pot to where Jiwan indicated, but the plate of cucumbers was in the way. Jiwan extended her hand to set it off to the side, while at the same time, the server pushed it aside with the pot. He flinched as the bottom of the pot connected with the top of her hand. Ow! That's hot. Jiwan grabbed her hand and jumped up. Jiwan! Oh no, Jiwan! Oh my, I'm so sorry. Minhuan, Suman, and the server all yelped all at the same time. Jiwan quickly cooled the burn on her, on the 
well, cooled the burn on the cool jar of water. The back of her hand was already turning red, and it throbbed with a searing pain. It's fine. Do you have any ice or ointment for burns? Jiwon trailed off and looked at the back of her hurt hand. The injury looked just how she remembered. Even though she was careful not to get burned by her flat iron, she still received the same burn in a different situation. Hang on, dear. I'll get some ice first. I don't have any ointment, though. I'll go buy some. Wait here. Minwon shot, Minwon shot up and ran out. This was definitely a member, memory she didn't have from her past life. Does it hurt a lot? Oh no, Jiwon, this will probably scar. Jiwon was sitting there vacantly looking at the server when Suman suddenly grasped her hand. Jiwon jerked her hand away unconsciously. Let go. Sorry, does that hurt? Did I touch it? The corner of Suman's eyes turned down. Jiwon didn't respond. Thanks to the ice pack the server brought her, the throbbing receded a bit. I brought some ice. Here, how's it feeling? Minwon entered again, gasping for breath, and spilled the contents of the plastic bag he brought on the table. Jiwon started, stared blankly ahead as the server apologized again and stuck bandages on her hand. At the company, she didn't fall because Ji Hyuk caught her, but she ended up tripping somewhere else. And earlier tonight, she was able to avoid the flat iron thanks to her memories of the past but was burned because of a steaming pot anyway were things that were meant to happen going to happen no matter what chills ran down her spine when she lifted her head she saw suman's wide eyes brimming with tears mao minwan furiously fanned the back of her hand did that mean she had to marry that psychopath in this life too jiwan buried the terrifying thought in her mind Minwan was going to be gone from her life. After helping her a little and Suman, uh, and Suman sooner, since she wasn't of any help at all. Falling or being burned were accidents that could happen coincidentally, but marriage was something that could only happen if she signed a marriage certificate and walked down the aisle. Surely something as complex as that was avoidable. It's fine. Let's just drink. Suman, sorry. Jiwon lifted her glass with her unhurt hand. Her burn didn't matter in the slightest. When she needed, what she needed was money to move and quit work. Jiwon, the drinks are going down smoothly for you today. Suman clapped while watching Jiwon empty her glass. Suman's glass was still more than half full. You must not be a good drinker, Miss Jiong, and you're buying drinks for us today. Minwon, Minwon said with a cackle. Suman shook her head intensely and downed the remainder of her glass. No, I'm a great drinker. I can even carry our Jiwon home. Jiwon inwardly smirked. Suman quickly turned red just by drinking a single glass of soju, but her mental capacities were perfectly fine. That meant she could pretend to be drunk whenever she wanted to. Just like now. Mr. Park, why do you like our Jiwon? When she emptied her second glass, Suman rested her chin on her hand and smiled enticingly. Minwan scratched the back of his head, suddenly self-conscious. She's nice, uh, and she's good at what she does, too. Yeah, our Jiwon is too nice. Wow, Mr. Park, you have a good eye for people. It wasn't funny, but Suman's giggle and linked, and linked her arms to Jiwon's. She opened her mouth wide. Jiwon, feed me a cucumber. <laughs> this is hilarious. Jiwon dipped the biggest cucumber spear on the plate in the sauce and fed it to Suman. She shoved it deep so it would go down Suman's throat, attacked without any warning. Suman grabbed her neck and coughed. Her face was more red than before. Are you okay? You shouldn't have eaten. You should have eaten more slowly. I think you're a bit too drunk. Jiwon pounded Suman's back and had her stand. This won't do, Minwan. I'll go flag down a taxi for Suman and send her off. Huh? Jiwan, I'm not drunk. You definitely are. Your face is so red. Come on, lean on me. Since she had put in such an effort pretending to be drunk, she couldn't magically recover now. Suman was dragged out of the bar without even being able to wipe away the sauce on her mouth. Jiwan, I don't want to go home yet. There's a taxi. Over here. Jiwon stopped a taxi and happened to be that happened to be passing by and shoved Suman inside. 
Silliman Dong, please. Ji Wan. Bye. <laughs> the taxi door shut with a slam. Good riddance. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. Oh, okay. So they have comments. I never scrolled past after I finished the chapter. Okay. <clears throat> so some of the... I'll read the top comments. Uh, one from Cassie that said... That chewed on a cockroach line gave me shivers. Don't blame Jiwon for feeling that way around these two. Uh, if only Suman could have gotten taken away by a garbage truck. That fits her way better. <laughs> She's trash. Yes, yes, yes. Thumbs up. <laughs> the self-control it took to not hold the cucumber in place is admirable. <laughs> what no ice makes a burn? No, what no ice makes a burn worse. Does it? I always ran it under cold water. But anyway. And then the last one is, our girl is really good in her work. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. Those are terrible compliments from him. Alrighty, so that's the end of chapter five. We'll be going to chapter six next. I hope you stick around. What were your thoughts on chapter five? Suman is so ridiculous. I, have, I wish I could be a fly on the wall to see her acting drunk. I don't think I've ever acted drunk before. If anything, I've tried to act sober and that shit don't work. <laughs> but thanks for listening. We're going to go into chapter six. Let's go. Hey, it's Ashley, AMC me, and I'm back. That was fast, right? With episode six of Marry My Husband. And we're just going to jump right into it. Okay. So chapter six is called learning the basics of stocks before resigning. Jiwon waved at the taxi as it drove away. It was so easy to get rid of Suman. Why had she stupidly just suffered that woman's presence in her past life? When she returned to the street bar, Min Huan was downing the rest of the soju by himself. A forgotten memory suddenly flashed through Ji Wan's mind. Min Huan routinely dr enjoyed drinking, but as his stocks plummeted, he began drinking more and more, and he always directed his drunken behavior at Ji Wan. He would throw cups at her and shout, saying it was all her fault that nothing worked out. Did you find a taxi for Miss Jiong? Minwan asked, seeing Jiwon at the entrance. Jiwon collected her bearing and sat down nonchalantly. Yeah, she can't hold her booze, but she tries to drink more anyway. She gets really bad hangovers, too. She must be bad at drinking. That's cute, Minwan murmured. Jiwon scoffed when he wasn't looking and ordered another bottle of soju. It was too painful to look at Minwan's face while sober. Let's drink a lot. Tomorrow's Saturday. Upon twisting the cap open, droplets sprayed out. <laughs> Jiwon took off her glasses to wipe them on her sleeves. Then she noticed Minwon staring at her. Without her glasses, Minwon, Minwon's facial features blurred together. It was an unexpected surprise. Jiwon felt sick sitting in front of him. Jiwon, Minwon suddenly sounded twice as tender as usual. What? I think you're prettier without your glasses. Do you have any plans to get laser eye surgery? She did, actually, but not to look pretty for Minwon, nor to become a girlfriend Minwon could proudly display to others. Jiwon folded her glasses on the table and lifted her glass of soju. I'll think about it during next year's holidays. My wages will probably increase by then, hopefully, or should I try investing? The two glasses of soju clinked together. 
investing. You're interested in stocks too? Minwan leaned forward eagerly at the mention of his favorite topic. Jiwan emptied her glass and used her spoon to take a sip of the steaming fish cake soup. Actually, I have no idea how it works. Can you teach me? Beneath the table, Jiwan opened her phone and pressed the recording button. All she needed to know was what stock Minwan had invested in when he got his first taste of money in 2009. Once she learned that, she could quit work and bid those two cockroaches farewell forever. <laughs> she wouldn't have to marry Minwan or live a short, miserable, miserable life again. I'm still studying up on it right now. I just have some shares in a few places, he said. A few? Which ones? Mm, Minwan frowned, trying to remember. Jin Jiwan glanced down to make sure the conversation was being recorded. I have some in S Electronics, like everyone starting out, and I bought some from D Panels, a company that makes parts for chips. I also bought some from J Pharmaceuticals. The company sounded familiar. In a future that was now the past, Minwan had become inebriated over a few glasses of wine and prattled on about Jiwan, uh, things Jiwan couldn't understand. The price of J Farm. J Pharmaceuticals? The price of J Mar Pharmaceuticals rose by four times, he said. If I had put my retirement funds toward it, I would have made a few hundred million won by now. What a shame, isn't it? So that was J Pharmaceuticals. Jiwan pressed the save button. That's incredible. I can't imagine saving in stocks. I'm too scared. It's not that hard once you start, Minwan grinned and put down his cup of water. Right? Jiwan, what do you want to say? Uh, what did you want to say? Cut. <laughs> right. Jiwan, what did you want to say in the cafe earlier? Hmm? She blinked. You started to say something, but you couldn't finish because I had to answer the phone. Oh, that. She had been about to break up with him. <laughs> Jiwan contemplated saying it now, but she decided to postpone it again. It wasn't time yet. She needed to glean more information from him, pay off her debts, and then move. I was going to ask if you wanted to eat dinner later, Jiwan reciprocated. Minwan smiled and put her glasses back on. Oh, Jiwan reciprocated Minwan's smile and put her glasses back on. The blurry world became, a cl became clear. Unfortunately, she could see Minwan's face again, too. I see, he said. Your words were caught off because of that rude department head punk. Rude department head punk? Jiwan wrinkled her forehead. Ji Hyuk Yu. He's young, but he's so inflexible. Was he? In her faint memory, Ji Hyuk was as large as a tree. Jiwan was quite tall, but when she stood next to him in the elevator, the top of her head barely reached Ji Hyuk's chin. Mr. Yu, I like him, Jiwan replied. Our division doesn't work overtime thanks to him. He pushes everyone to the limit just so people don't have to work overtime. Minwan grumbled. Apparently, he didn't remember that he had taken all his annual leave and vacation days thanks to Ji Hyuk pushing him to do so. And that's weirdly, in, he's weirdly irritable to me. It's like he's trying to embarrass me. He seems irritable to everyone, Jiwan said. This was true. Ji Hyuk once t told her the earrings Zuman gifted her didn't suit her at all. Miss Kang, he said. Normally they would have stood in awkward silence, but Ji Hyuk held her gaze that day. Yes, Mr. Yu? Uh, that... Ji Hyuk had pointed to his ears with his long fingers. The earrings? Suman, I mean, Miss Jung gave them to me, she replied. Ji Wan didn't usually wear accessories, so she thought that he was going to compliment her on them. However, Ji Hyuk had narrowed his eyes. They really don't suit you. It had been extremely embarrassing. Ji Wan rubbed her empty ears now as she looked at Min Wan. I prefer people to those who are nice to everyone. Minwan poured himself some more soju, upset that Jiwan didn't agree with him. Sure, I guess you must feel that way, since you don't exactly have a cute personality, he mumbled. This son of a bitch. It was clear that he was saying how he really felt. Maybe I should have kept my glasses off, Jiwan thought. She looked away from Minwan's too clear face and stood. 
I should head back in now. Minwan, you should call a cab. You're leaving? Minwan, Minwan rose too, with a surprised face Jiwan had never seen. Mm. Jiwan had never said she would leave first, not once since the two of them started dating. You're acting strange today. What's wrong? Jiwan just shrugged and pushed aside the plastic covers of the bar entrance. Now that her newly gained life had restarted, she realized what a waste of time it would be to talk to Minwan any longer. Hey, Jiwan. She only walked a few steps when Minwan chased her and grabbed her shoulder. She stared at his hand. That hurts. What are you doing? What are you doing? You were acting like this at work earlier, too. Are you mad at me about something? Minwan's true self peeked through his facade. It was a side of him she'd seen often, a side that emerged any time Jiwan bothered him in the slightest. It was a warm night, but Jiwan suddenly felt cold. Back then, Jiwan did whatever Minwan ordered because she was scared he might leave her. That was my that was why Minwan had proposed to her. She was kind, frugal, and acted meek in front of his parents. Let go of me, when Minwan, it really hurts. Jiwan barely contained herself from pushing him off. Instead, she lightly grasped Minwan's hand and removed it. Safety first. She knew the violence hidden behind that kind face. She had to slowly and safely break up with him. I've been sick since earlier today at work. I thought I'd feel better after taking some pills, but I'm still not feeling well. She made her voice sound as weak as she could. My stomach hurts. Are you angry? Minwan's jaw loosened at that. Oh, I thought you were mad at me. I thought you dared to be mad at me. That was how Minwan's words sounded to Jiwan. Let's go. I'll walk you home, he said. Jiwan obediently walked next to Minwan. Fortunately, her apartment was close. Go on inside. I'll call you when I get home, he said. Okay, take care. Thankfully, her smile came naturally. Jiwan sighed in relief as she stood. Uh, Jiwan sighed in relief as soon as she got home. The first thing she did was take another shower. She scrubbed her her loofah extra hard over every spot Suman or Minwan had touched. Shortly after she finished drying her hair, her phone rang. Minwan was calling. Jiwan turned her phone over and switched on the TV. On the screen, nine pretty skinny girls sang animatedly. I should have lived a pretty sparkly life like that. Regret suddenly filled her. Jiwan gazed at the screen, then went and sat in front of her vanity. I was pretty too. Jiwan smiled at the mirror. A woman with long, lush hair and clean skin smiled back. When she opened her phone, she saw two missed calls, one from Suman and the other from Minwan. After Minwan drank and threw a tantrum, wrecking the house, he always slept like the dead. He wouldn't call again. Relieved, Jiwan opened the recorded file from earlier. I have some in S Electronics, like everyone starting out, and I bought some from D Panels, a company that makes parts for chips. I also bought some from J Pharmaceuticals. There was one month left before J Pharmaceuticals would skyrocket. D Panel would continue to skyrocket for the later half of 2009. Then it would peak at the beginning of 2010, and S Elect Electronics would obviously do well. Jiwan, uh, Jiwan turned off the TV and opened her laptop instead. J Pharmaceuticals, she murmured. A quick, a quick search showed its current market price, 8,000 won. This price would jump five times higher after the United States verified the results of their clinical demonstration. If she invested the 10 million she had had, if she invested the 10 million won she had, as well as the other 10 million won she could take out, the money would be worth 100 million won in a month. Ooh, girl. Ah, ballin'. That's smart move. If I was going in the past, I would do that. Stocks. Thanks for the alimony. Jiwan shut her notebook and thanked Minwan, who is probably sleeping right now. I'm not feeling well. I'm going to take some pills and rest. I don't think I can go on our date today. After sending a text message to Minwan on Saturday morning, Jiwan ran to a large bookstore. She knew which stocks she needed, but she didn't know how to buy them. She needed to learn more. The basics of investing, beginner's first steps to stocks, the secrets of investing, all the books in the stocks selection had similar titles. 
Jiwan flipped through them one by one. Eventually, she ended up sitting on the floor. Learning the basics of stocks before resigning, the distinct title stood out to her. This is it. But just as Jiwan went to grab the book, a pair of men's shoes stopped in front of the shelf. Sorry, I'll just pull this out real quick, Jiwan murmured and stretched out her hand. Before she could touch the book, the man bent over and pulled it out instead. Oh, thank you. Jiwan lifted her head, then froze at the familiar face. Was it because she'd been sitting for too long? The moment she stretched out her knee, her leg turned numb. Ah! She stacked a couple thick books on top of her knees. Now they trembled. Now they tumbled down as she wobbled to a half standing position. Miss Kang? Ji Hyuk swiftly grasped her shoulder and lifted her and lifted his horn rimmed glasses. Did you not go to the hospital? It was the weekend, but Ji Hyuk was still wearing the same boring suit he always wore to work. Of course, Ji Wan had her hair in a ponytail and was wearing her thick glasses. She didn't look any different either. I took some pills. I'm fine now, she said hastily. Ji Hyuk quickly removed his hand as Ji Wan righted herself. He picked up the book Ji Wan had dropped and scanned the title. Are you going to resign? What were the chances of getting caught by your boss as you bought a book titled Learning the Basics of Stocks Before Resigning? <laughs> Slim, you would think. Jiwon snatched the book away and held it tightly, feeling sleepish, feeling sheepish. So are you? Ji Hyuk's voice dropped lower than normal. It's because we're in a bookstore. He has no other choice but to speak quietly, Jiwon thought. Of course not. I'm just trying out stocks, Minwon said. Min Minwon is so into them these days. Ji Hyuk had, had almost no facial expressions. Usually, the most he did was furrow his eyebrow when an employee made a mistake. But as soon as Jiwon said this, Ji Hyuk's forehead wrinkled like an advertisement appointment had fallen through. Mr. Yu, did I say something wrong? She asked hesitantly. Ji Hyuk rubbed his face when he looked at Ji Wan again. His expression was devoid of emotion. Ji Wan concluded that it would be best not to talk about resigning or stocks any longer. Are you here to buy books too, Mr. Yu? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ji Wan didn't know how to reply to such a short answer, but it felt awkward just to leave. Jiwan attempted to crack a joke, something she never did, just to break the silence. So, we did end up meeting today. What do you mean? he asked. I said on the phone yesterday I'd see you tomorrow. Oh, right. Ji Hyuk stared at her. Jiwan regretted speaking. If she'd known she'd had to explain her joke, she would have just endured the awkward silence. Anyway, I'll get going now. Thank you for your for the help. Miss Kang. Ji Hyuk stopped her. Yes? Are you going to meet Mr. Park? Oh my gosh, that's the end. Mm, not too much happened, except for we learned earlier than in her previous life how bad Minwan's temper can be. And Ji Hyuk seems concerned she wants to quit. Let me drink some water and then I'm gonna do chapter seven too, because I'm starting to get Okay. Onward to chapter seven. It's not letting me. Oh, it's making me buy coins. How dare. Oh, it's my daily unlock. Okay, okay, okay. So I gotta wait. I gotta wait. Alrighty. So not much happened this chapter. It was still interesting. Um, 
I can't wait for her to get away from these losers. I cannot wait. Especially that Min Wan. He's, he's scary. But thank you. And I'll be back with chapter 7. Hello, it's your girl, AMC Me, and we're back with chapter seven. Let's get into it. Chapter seven, marry my husband. This was the second time Ji Hyuk had asked her a personal question. First, when he critiqued her earrings, and then now. It was very unexpected. Why was he asking? Moreover, Ji Wan didn't understand her own reaction. She could just request he not ask about personal matters. Why was she hesitating? After a short contemplation, Jiwon shook her head. No, I'm not meeting him today. Ji Hyuk did not reply. Jiwon said goodbye and turned to leave. But then she remembered she had come to the bookstore after she lied and told Min Wan she was sick. She turned back. Right, uh, Mr. Yu. Ji Hyuk raised his eyebrows. Can you keep a secret that you saw me here today, especially from Min Wan? Why should I? Ji Hyuk asked. It was a simple question, but it felt threatening. Was it because he was so tall? She ducked her head. I told him I was sick. Are you really sick? Ji Hyuk squinted. I'm perfectly fine, as you can see. Ji Hyuk fell silent again. Ji Wan anxiously cleared her throat. <clears throat> well, then, Ji Hyuk started at the same moment. He stopped and nodded for her to continue. Well, I wanted to be alone this weekend. It was a lame excuse. What were you going to say, Mr. Yu? Ji Wan added quickly. Oh, then, Ji Hyuk seemed to hesitate, but then he gave a short nod. Then I'll see you on Monday. Mr. Yu hesitating? <laughs> no way. Jiwon nodded back. See you Monday. Relieved to finally escape this awkwardness, Jiwon scurried off to pay for her books. As she walked through the revolving door, she glanced back to see Ji Hyuk was still in the same position. Deep in a book, she found him with ease because of his height. I wonder if he also does stocks, she wondered. Returning home, she spent the entire weekend studying. It was the first time she'd studied anything since graduating from college. She was a bit lost, but she managed to learn the basics. The weekend passed and Monday came. Jiwon arrived at work an hour earlier than usual. She intended to finish her morning tasks early at this time. The bustling lobby and crammed elevators were all empty. The office would probably be empty as well. Jiwon hummed to herself and opened the door labeled Marketing Division 1. When she walked inside, she saw long legs in a fitted suit sticking out from Ji Hyuk's desk. Huh, Jiwon started humming. In retrospect, she realized she'd never seen Ji Hyuk come into work. She never heard anyone say they'd arrived with him either. Which made sense. If Ji Hyuk always came to work an hour early, since she was there, she might as well greet him. Ji Won closed the office door and walked to Ji Hyuk's seat. Upon approaching, she noticed he was sleeping with his arms folded. Leaning back in his chair, he seemed comfortable, like it wasn't his first time sleeping this way. If he was going to sleep anyway, Ji Won didn't understand why he came to work early. Rays of sunlight poured through the window. Ji Hyuk frowned in his sleep, probably from the bright light. Ji Won was about to return her, to her seat, but she walked to the window instead. Carefully, she lowered the blinds. When she looked back, Ji Hyuk had settled back into an easy slumber. So he keeps his glasses on even when he sleeps? Ji Won took a closer look, fascinated. Upon observing his face, she realized his skin was better than most women's. He clo his closed eyelids flutter. Ji Won jumped back in surprise and straightened. Almost simultaneously, Ji Hyuk's eyes opened. Ji Won? Ji Won? Not Miss Kang? Yes, did you call for me? She asked. Ji Hyuk shook his head and fixed his glasses. Miss Kang, you're here early. 
She must have heard wrong. Surely he hadn't said her first name. Jiwan nodded at the stiff greeting, hardly able to believe he had just been sleeping. I left early on Friday, so I should make up the time today. It's fine. There wasn't anything important going on, he waved a hand. But you told Minwan the office was busy. Ji Hyuk suddenly pushed back his chair and stood. Did you have breakfast? Another personal question. This was the third one. Somehow she felt she had become closer to Ji Hyuk. I had a glass of soy milk at home. Before Ji Won finished her sentence, Ji Hyuk stood out of the office, strolled out of the office. Why did he ask if he wasn't even going to listen? Ji Won returned to her seat and turned on the computer. She could start purchasing shares at 830. She registered her bank account and verified her identity, getting ready. Just then, Ji Hyuk set a brown package on her desk. What's this, Ji Won? What's this? Ji Won stopped and looked up at Ji Hyuk. I bought it as I was buying mine, he said. Oh, it's fine. Ji Won stopped herself. Good idea. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Since she had elected to live happily, she wasn't going to act wary or deny other people's goodwill. Ji Won ate her sandwich with her left hand and continued to work with her right. 8.10 a.m. She finished eating her sandwich. 8.20 a.m. She stretched out a hand absently and discovered a cup of takeout iced coffee on her desk. 8.27. She sipped the iced Americano. 8.30. She put in an order for J Pharmaceutical stocks. A total of 2,510 shares. The market value of this stock amounted to 20 million won. Damn, girl. Okay, I see you. <sighs> she felt thirsty after focusing so much on her first purchase. She moved her mouth to take another sip of the iced Americano, then glanced at Ji Hyuk. Did you give me this earlier with the sandwich? Thank you. Yes. It was a talent to respond to a thank you like that. <laughs> Jiwon stirred her coffee and leaned back in her chair. She put in 10 million won that she had borrowed from the bank, along with another 10 million won, the only assets she had left behind. The only assets her dad had left behind. Now, all that remained was her to, for her to wait for her to change her fate. At 8.35, Joran entered the office and greeted her. Good morning. The rest of the employees began to arrive one by one. Minwan and Suman arrived together, almost exactly on time. Good morning, everyone. Jiwan, you're here already. Suman jumped and hugged Jiwan from behind. Jiwan moved Suman aside and opened a file. Call me Miss Kang at work. I told you multiple times already. Oh, sorry, Miss Kang. She could see it without having to turn around. Suman probably looked like a puppy left out in the rain. Minwan looked between Suman and Jiwan. Jiwon, how are you feeling? Minwan subtly pushed Suman aside and touched Jiwon's forehead. It would probably feel less revolting if a, a fly landed on her forehead. I'm fine. More importantly, I sent you an email earlier. Could you give me a response by noon? She needed to distance herself. Jiwon focused on her tasks all morning. In her past life, she had wanted to go to do... In her past life, all she wanted to do was get off work early. Now her heart felt full at the thought of her responsibilities. She was helpful, a productive member of society. Done. Jiwon reviewed the document she composed one last time and clicked the print button. The malfunctioning printer near the entrance clunked and began to spew out documents. On her way to grab the paper, she glanced at Min Hwan's computer screen. He'd opened a window to a trading site and put in an order to sell his shares. J Pharmaceuticals, a total of 3,500 shares. Jiwon blinked. It was definitely an order to sell, not buy. But these stocks would jump five times higher in a month. Minwon, what are you doing? Click. Minwon pressed confirmed, then turned around. His first taste of money had just flown away. Good, bitch. <laughs> Sorry, that was not in there. <clears throat> I got some intel this weekend. I'm selling these shares to invest in something else, Minwan whispered. Intel, she asked. MW Technology. They're partnering with S Electronics on modern technology. It'll blow up soon. Sure. Jiwan didn't have any interest in stocks, but even she had heard about the MW Technology incident. 
the CEO said they were going to introduce some modern technology for phones. Stocks blew up for a brief moment. However, one month later, the CEO ran away overseas and all the investor, investors suffered great losses. I see, Jiwan nodded and took the papers from the printer, returning to her seat. All Jiwan wanted to do was change her own fate. She'd bought the exact same shares Minwan had bought in the past, planning to sell them in a month after the stock jumped 10 times higher. But now Minwan had sold all his own stocks to invest in a fraud. Jiwan chewed her lip deep in thought. Her gaze dropped to the bandage on the back of her hand. Things were fated to happen would eventually happen. But this time, when Jiwan did something that she hadn't done in the past, someone else's future changed. She had stolen Minwan's, had she stolen Minwan's fortune? I hope so, girly. Jiwan lifted her head to glance at Minwan. He must have considered it as a form of affection. Because he smiled back, she felt sick again. Ugh. She needed to test this, but how? Jiwan looked back down. The blouse she was wearing caught her eye. It was the most expensive item in her non-existent wardrobe. Hmm. Let's continue after lunch. At Ji Hyuk's words, everyone stopped what they were doing. The hasty people were already opening the office door. Miss Kang, let's go and eat some lunch, Suman called, as if she'd already forgotten her earlier embarrassment. This had happened in the past, too. Suman kept calling her Jiwon at their workplace, until Jiwon told her solemnly that Suman needed to address her as Miss Kang in the office. Suman had said she understood, and during lunch, they went down to the cafeteria. Then Suman had spun around holding a tray and spilled everything on Jiwon. That definitely wasn't a coincidence, either. Jiwon's eyes flash. Yes, let's go. Jiwon and Suman headed for the cafeteria together. Jiwon's memory grew more vivid as she spotted the red kimchi stew. At the time, she couldn't get rid of the stew stain no matter what she did. She ended up throwing away her blouse. Please give me a lot of stew, Suman called cheerfully. The server gave Suman so much stew that her bowl over nearly overflowed. Just a little for me, Jiwon said. She followed Suman to an empty area. Suman eyed Jiwon through the mirror on the wall. It looked like she was checking to see where Jiwon stood. Jiwon pretended not to notice and moved closer to Suman. One, two, three. On the count of three, Jiwon <laughs> slid aside. Simultaneously, Suman turned around and lost her balance. Miss Kang, let's. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Suman's food poured all over Minhwan, who stood right behind her. Minhwan's white shirt turned bright red with stew stains. Huh? Why are you? Oh no, isn't this shirt your favorite, Minhwan? Jiwon asked, placing her tray on the table nearby. Actually, the shirt Minhwan wore was a designer shirt that Jiwon had gifted him. Suman teared up as Minhwan gritted his teeth to contain his temper. I'm sorry, Suman cried. I turned back because I thought Jiwon wasn't following. Are you okay? Don't ask if he's okay. Bring some towels, Jiwon asked briskly. Minwan, you should hurry and wash up. Suman just stood there, bewildered, until Jiwon nudged her. Huh? What? Me? In situations like this, Jiwon nearly always took charge and cleaned up the mess. Suman clearly expected her to do the same again now. Bring a lot, Jiwon said. And some towels if there are any. Uh, okay, Suman hesitated for a moment, then scurried away to grab paper towels. Jiwon hunched over and picked up the food with her bare hands. This was nothing. Tripping, being burned, these two events had evolved, hadn't involved anyone but her. On the other hand, investing in stocks or getting food dumped on your favorite shirt by someone else, those involved other people. A, hypothes a hypothesis popped into Jiwon's mind. Fate didn't change. What was bound to happen would happen. If she had changed her fate, she couldn't know how it would affect the world. She might seize someone else's fortune for herself or turn her own misfortune into someone else's. That last theory was the most important. Miss Kang, I, bought some, I brought some paper towels. 
Suman ran up, holding a bunch of paper towels. Jiwan threw the tray, tray away and wiped her hands on a paper towel, smiling. Go sit, Miss Jung. I'll come back after washing my hands. Suman nodded enthusiastically. Jiwan went to the bathroom and turned on the faucet. Her thoughts flowed as quickly as the streaming water. Suman, take the trash you want as take the trash you want so much with you to the sewers. Instead of me, Jiwan muttered as the corner of her mouth turned up. Oh shit. This This Jiwan. Ooh, that's the end of chapter seven. This Jiwan is focused, okay? And I love it. She looks like she's about to hold no punches. And I am ready. Calling them both sewer rats. Which they are. <laughs> uh, but it's so funny when they did the cafeteria scene. Because it made me think of the drama. Which I recently finished watching. Um, for the third time. Because I did it. I watched it. I watched each episode twice when I did my um, reaction videos to uh, the drama. So this was my third time just watching it for enjoy pure enjoyment, not for any kind of content. And I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Reignited my hate ma hatred for Suman and Minwon and my love for Jiwon and Jihyuk and his adorable sister who i hope we get to it we meet in the next episode but thank you so much for listening um again i'm gonna start doing at least three videos to uh three chapters together at a time so um the videos will be longer and i hope you enjoy it again i hope you have a great day evening afternoon whatever time it is that you're listening and if you like the video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe i would love to hear what your thoughts on if you've read the web novel the webtoon or you watch the k-drama so far i've become a fan of all three i've seen the drama I've read the webtoon, so those for sure are favorites. I'm just starting in the web novel, but so far, so good. I love getting all the extra nuance and um, thoughts behind the character, at least Jiwon, because that's who we're mostly getting, but I'm really enjoying it, and I hope you are too, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!